everyone. This is Tanvi Patel. I'm a principal within the firm. I focus mainly on payment transformation, and I'm here today with Gabriela Almeida. Hi, Tanvi. It's great to be here with you. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a director in our payments practice. Work a lot with you. Awesome. So we are here today to talk to you all about payment modernization. Now, in general, payment modernization in my head is three-legged stool. You have the financial institutions that are in this whole journey of digitizing payments, creating customer experience, trying to ensure that they're giving this seamless omni-channel experience, right? Then we are seeing a massive eruption within the tech providers where more and more fintechs are coming up, trying to make sure that the banks can leverage the fintech relationship to kind of do speed to market. Plus, we are seeing the big techs also kind of modernizing, leveraging all the emerging technologies, trying to kind of get to their banking clients out there. The third legged stool, in my opinion, is the market infrastructures. We have so many market infrastructures out here, and we are seeing them modernizing and taking initiatives within today's market, right? So now you're having three parties trying to modernize and create this ecosystem within the US. Whenever that does, right, it's scary to when you're in enhancing a platform after 20 plus years, right? So resiliency has been a big topic of conversation. Are you making sure everything is resilient? Are you allowed, I, uh, banks are mainly thinking about, am I ready to commit to my payment commitments to my end users? So. I know you've been having a lot of conversations with clients about what's the contingency? Am I ready for this? Like, what am I going to do if I don't meet certain of these market timelines? So can you share with us what's the conversation you're having with the clients? Yeah, to your point, um, one of the biggest conversations these days is around ISO 20022, specifically for Fedwire. Now, we know SWIFT has been around um, for several years now, now in the coexistence period, um, and then chips went live in April with ISO. And so one of the biggest topics is kind of as we approach the 2025 deadline for Fedwire ISO, how are banks doing progressing against their timeline, um, as well as what are the contingency plan options that they are exploring so that they are ready for the deadline if their kind of current plan gets delayed or is not met. So as you're having conversations, right, do you see the conversation being consistent. Like all, all financial institutions in the same bucket or range of getting ready for this ISO timeline. Yeah, I mean, I think not necessarily. I think everyone's in a different kind of bucket um, and it depends on the bank and kind of where they are in the journey. I think overall we're seeing a lot of the global banks are in a bit, I would say, ahead of the game. Um, a lot of that is because they do have global business. A lot of Europe is already on ISO. Um, they've kind of been through that as well as just have the resources in place kind of initially to pre-plan years ago, I would guess I would say. Mm -hmm. But now um, I would say the rest of the banks in the US especially are kind of at different points. I would say most of them are at the testing phase, doing end-to-end -end testing, getting ready for DIT2 testing. I would say kind of need to be at that point, um, as well as a lot of banks are now exploring contingency options because this is kind of the first time we've done uh, something of the scale in the US. It's uh, making sure you have kind of all your ducks in a row to make sure you uh, are ready for the March deadline. Okay. I think because it's such a key change in the U.S. especially, kind of changing your, I know ISO is all about payment data, you're changing from a legacy format to this thing, but it's not just a data exercise, right? So what are banks having conversations? What are the contingencies that they're talking about, uh, in your opinion, the top two that you've heard from the clients that we talk to all the time? It's like, what are the options that they're looking at? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, a lot of banks are thinking about an ISO translator, and that translation layer can uh, take ver various different forms depending on where you put that translation layer in your systems. But a lot of it is around translating that incoming data um, that is in ISO format to be able to um, be digested by your legacy systems mm -hmm. um, and then being able to translate it out in ISO format. Um, there are some benefits that you can kind of keep your current infrastructure at least as a short-term solution and just add that translation layer but there are a lot of considerations you need to think about it's a short-term solution you need to make sure data isn't getting um, unnecessarily truncated you need to make sure you have data storage as well as you tend to also be relying on a third-party vendor so making sure you have that planning in place and have um, that solution in place and as well as tested um, and then i would say the other big um, 
contingency plan we've seen is around Fedline Advantage. Now, this is a very manual process. <laughs> you need to have um, a connection to, to yeah. Fedline Advantage already in place or be able to put it in place, um, which takes some time. You need to also be able to test that. That needs to be in ISO format, even using um, Fedline Advantage. Um, and then the manual piece, I think, is the biggest consideration around there, depending on what your volume is in Fedline. Um, it is a very manual process, so you probably need additional resources um, to process that, yeah. um, that volume, at least in the short term. And then again, that would be a short term solution. So it's really, um, these are really truly contingency options, but I would say those are the two we're seeing um, most, most discussion about. Sure. It's interesting because as you think about contingency, right, there's of course a mandate that everyone needs to do their PCB disaster recovery, right? So contingency is always being discussed, but this contingency is slightly different. The two options you provided do have cons associated yeah. with it, right? Especially Fedline Advantage. It's been there, you annually test it, but it's so manual that do you see an option, like thinking about taking that large volume of a Fed wire, which at any institution is pretty high, yeah. most of them is pretty high, Putting that manually through that terminal, it's an option. Yeah. Is it a viable option? Maybe for a day, but not beyond that. So any other contingency that you've heard um, institutions thinking about in lieu of like, you know, all banks like to do plan A, B, C, and Z. So yeah. do you, have you heard anything other than the two that you've spoken about? Twice? Yeah, um, I mean, we've seen some banks kind of explore uh, correspondent banking. Again, not maybe the best option. Again, these are all contingency, but we also have seen uh, banks taking the opportunity to take a true look at their wire volume and see if they can reroute it through other payment rails. Again, you, there needs to be analysis done. It's not like you can just decide you're gonna reroute your volume through like RTP or FedNow as an example, um, there are considerations with that. As sure. an example, if you want to take this opportunity to make a more strategic decision of rerouting some payments through instant payments, you need to make sure first and foremost, uh, you have um, send and receive capabilities for FedNow and RTP. Yep. And then for you sure. also need to look at the volume of payments, um, as well as the transaction value of those payments to see if it makes sense to go through a different payment rail and you're following the uh, relevant regulations as well. And I think that would come also with, right, like all of a sudden, if you take your wire volume and send it through ACH, even through same day ACH, yeah. it's the communication with your end user, right? Yeah. Till today, yes, in future, I think we, we all hope that our consumer and commercial clients would only tell their banking institution that I want to send X amount to X by today yeah. or by this day, and it sends out. Today, we are not there yet. Yeah, so exactly. you do need to have that whole communication plan with your end user if I'm rerouting the wire payment through ACH, yeah. right? I think that's, it's very interesting because every time you touch payment, the whole concept of banks trying to make sure that in today's fraud environment, as fraud's also spiking up, yeah. how do you make sure you transition this or kind of still adhere to your payment commitment, if you say so? Yeah but in a secure and a trusted way. Because yeah. at the end of the day, your trust is what you, yeah. is what you is you're gonna rely on from a payment perspective, right? Um, this is very interesting. Um, but again, as an industry, ISO is not new to us, yeah. right? As you said yeah. before, CHIPS has gone through, we all have lessons learned to yeah. go through that. Um, but again, it's a good exercise for the SWIFT coming in because the coexistence period ends in November yeah. of next year. Okay. Um, do you want to give final remarks or to our audience out here who want to kind of work in the journey, are trying to help their financial institutions on what are the key things to keep in mind um, as this date is approaching? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it might sound simple, but planning's key, making sure you have all the right stakeholders at the table. This is truly a trans informational journey. It isn't just a data translation or data format change. Um, and so you want to make sure you are planning, you have the right governance in place, then you also have the right focus and resources on this as we approach that deadline to not only meet the deadline, but also make sure you're going to take advantage of um, all the benefits afterwards, because this is really about enriching the data and getting true benefits out of it, not just about kind of meeting the deadline. So uh, don't lose sight of that as well. Okay, thank you. This was very informative, right? I think if you want to, if you're helping your clients, if you are in that journey, uh, please talk. There are a lot of industry forums. You can come talk to us. Uh, happy to have conversations because this is going to truly transform our 
payment ecosystem. So thank you, Gabriella, yeah, for spending you. time with us today. And um, thank you, audience, for listening. Yeah, thank you.